Welcome to Sustainable Packaging with Corey Connors. Today's guest is my friend, Mr. Brandon Coleman from Michigan State University. He is a student leader. Hey, Brandon, how are you, sir? I'm doing good, Corey. I appreciate you for bringing me on. Man, thank you. Thank you for making some time. I've been trying to interview a student for a while because I'm excited to get your perspective on what it's like learning about packaging as a college student today and what it's like applying for jobs in the industry and, and interning and all of the things. So I'm excited to hear about all your story. So can you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about your background? Yeah, most definitely. So I'm from Michigan State, as you said. I'm coming from Southfield, Michigan, right next to Detroit. Just a little personal story about myself. I'm a, I like to say I'm a pretty fun guy. <laughs> I love music. I play guitar. I do photography. I try to do a little bit of everything, but as a professional and as a student, I'm really seeking to obtain this role as a, a learner or a sponge, someone who's just always seeking opportunities to learn. Which is actually you. what brought me here today. So good for you. Sounds like you're a creative person. Do you have in intentions of going into design? Um, I've always been interested in the, the design aspect. You know, just the idea behind photography for me is seeing my work out there yes. has always been a, a great thing. Right, right now, I'm working on editing pictures for the career fair yesterday. So we're oh, going right to see on. a little bit more work out there soon. <laughs> so I love, I love that. that. That's cool. I absolutely was amazed the first time I saw a package that I designed with the customer on a retail shelf out in a store. So it's it's pretty cool to, once mm -hmm. you get into the industry to see your work in in the wild, as we say. Yeah, I would <laughs> love that. <laughs> so yesterday was a big day for you. You said you were at the career fair at, at MSU. Yep. Can I call it MSU? Is that is that acceptable? <laughs> oh yeah, most definitely. <laughs> I don't want to have to say Michigan State University every time. <laughs> I feel it. But so the career fair, tell us about it. What was it like? Yep. So the career fair, I've done it in three installments now. So I've kind of taken up a different role each time. So yeah. in the fall, it was my first career fair. I was in there trying my hardest to, you know, get the experience, meet with different people and get my name out there. So yeah. these are opportunities that I think a career fair brings for students is, yeah, I got my name out there. I didn't get any offers in the fall, but <laughs> I took what I learned in the fall, applied it in the spring, and I received several offers. I made great connections, and yeah. it's been fun. And then lastly was this fall career fair. I took an alternative route, which was pretty much support. I, yeah. I got there at 7 in the morning. I stayed till 7 p.m., but I did not interview with a single company, but Good I made sure that all the other students were prepared. I took pictures for everyone. I was, I was playing, I told them the, the hype man of the party. So I was making sure I could share my knowledge with other people to help them attain these same things I got. So well done. And I think what you'll find is that, that giving attitude is going to, mm -hmm. is going to skyrocket your career because people like, you know, to, to be around people that are helpful and supportive. Mm -hmm. That's what I've found at least. Yep. Most definitely. So how many students would be at a career fair like that? Whew, so this one was a lot of work because yeah. <laughs> this one, we did a different structure. So we went to the Spartan Stadium and oh, wow. this one, we had about 200 signups. Jeez. So that means I was doing pep talks and headshots for 200 <laughs> students. But by the end of the night, it looked like I was the one doing the interviews. But by the end of the night, I, it was, I was... I was tired, but it was well worth it, like I said. Okay, so you're providing not only opportunities for the students to engage with potential companies that would hire them, but you're also giving them a headshot. You're getting mm -hmm. them in, like into the system, it sounds like. Yep, yep. so I'm big on LinkedIn. Like, I, I love LinkedIn networking, and I see a lot of my peers, they'll have, you know, selfies still, and I'm like, hey, <laughs> just hit me up. I'm free most of these days. We can sit down and get you a headshot because, like I said, I want everyone to be prepared for the moment. I, I've had people contact me on LinkedIn, and, you know, I want my LinkedIn to be a representation of who yeah. I am. So a shiny picture, a shiny smile will be the cherry on top. Yes, sir. Absolutely well said and so critical these days. You know, everybody's got an iPhone or a smartphone that has a really nice camera on it. Mm -hmm. So find a friend on campus that can help you take a picture of yourself in a, in a you know, at least a nice shirt. <laughs> right. and, and, and it will, I agree, that, that headshot uh, is much more professional than a, hey, check me out, like I'm in front of right. the MSU sign or something. But 
Yeah, man, I agree 100%. It's so important to present yourself professionally. Mm -hmm, most definitely. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about sustainability and packaging and what are students learning as, as it regards to that. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yep. So just touching as well as on MSU's program, I'd say they geared us towards um, a sustainable future. So a lot of our programs, a lot of our classes, our, our competitions are geared towards sustainable innovation. So yeah. MSU is also it's an agriculture school is based on sustainability. So a lot of our efforts go towards that as well. So oh, yeah. it's more than just a reflection of the things we learn in class, but the opportunities that we get with our undergrad research and graduate research also revolves around sustainability. So I'd say they get us some great experience and great exposure <laughs> with it. Well, that's a perfect connection between agriculture and sustainability and packaging. It all intertwines at the end of the day. That's, that mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. Yep. Have you had like a favorite experience in, in college so far in regards to packaging? Yep. So even just throwing it to towards one of my classes, I definitely say my, my most proud moments were spent in our packaging seminar course, which is yeah. 102 is taught by Kimberly Weir and yeah. as well as my 221 course taught by Angela Brand. It's, it was the perfect segue. Our first course was a seminar is to build us, help us develop our professional aspect. So that's why I'm here today is the LinkedIn. <laughs> we're all developing yeah. that in 102. And I believe it was the perfect segue into 221, which was our first material-based class. And I think Angela did a great job of just capturing the attention and continuing the, the passion for packaging. So she also does a packaging competition with the Glass Packaging Institute yearly. So, Okay. Tell me about that. That's awesome. I interviewed one of your staff, one of the staff members there, Aaron Tucker, and uh, mm -hmm. he, he spoke a little bit about that. But can you fill me in on the details? Yep. So the, the glass packaging competition, I believe it was a great addition to the program yep. simply because it, it gave us full control of what we wanted to do with that semester. All of the things that we learned in different classes, they were all incorporated into it, but it was never like required, but yeah, it was a great, it helped with team activities, helped with creativity, innovation. And it was, I really liked it. We had to design a bottle. We had to make sure we understood the process methods and whatnot, make sure it was a feasible design. Yeah. So like I said, I think it was a great intro to the entire program. That sounds like a lot of fun. So can you tell us about like, was it for spirits or did they say, okay, here's the drink we're going to put into this package. Mm -hmm. Now, now you come up with the idea for it. Did they give you some kind of ground rules? So actually. It was free range. Oh, we, wow. It was, it was a progressionary <laughs> pro project as well. So as we went through the course, we learned more of the fundamentals and we added it into our product, but we had to create our product. We had to create our package. We had to wow. create the process. So it was free range. It was great. Out, and like I said, Angela was along the entire way. If you had any questions, she'll That's provide awesome. you with examples. So it was great. That's wonderful. And what a cool ex hands-on experience for a future professional packaging worker, whatever mm -hmm. you go, wherever you go into design or sales or marketing or project management, all of that needs that kind of experience. So this is really cool. So let's talk about you. If you could have any job in, in packaging, what would the dream job for Brandon Coleman be? Yep. And I've, I've thought about this for a little bit <laughs> since I got into packaging actually was, you know, what do I, where do I fit? Where is my niche? But I say it all the time. I talk it up to wherever I feel like I belong, yep. wherever I feel like I'm happiest. The work environment is the biggest part for me. So yep. as long as I'm working towards project goals that align with my morals, like sustainability and innovation, yep. I don't have a dream company. I just have dream goals and, you know, I love that. But that's, that's pretty much what I'm looking forward to in these next few years. So, well, that's the right attitude for sure. And I, I'm sure you'll find it because the way that you reached out to me and, and it was just very, very well done and kudos to you for just coming at this thing in a, in a way that will, is going to put your name out there. It's going to, mm -hmm. it's going to get you out on the, on the right foot out in the world of packaging. But one of the things that we wanted to talk about today was this MSU Copac. Yep. And, and you're one of the leaders for that. And I want to speak to that. Can you tell us about it and what it is? 
Yeah, definitely. So um, MSU's COPAC, School of Packaging, they have an organization dedicated to professional and academic connections. So that's what it is. It's a coalition of packaging professionals and academic connections. And we dedicate all of our efforts into growth, not only for ourselves as e-board members, but for the student body to help them grow as well. So um, that's why career fair is so crucial is we have here an uh, e-board full of, like you said, student leaders. We all have internship experience, you know, co career fair experience. So Great. our efforts are dedicated to helping other people promote growth as well. So um, we had an egg drop as an icebreaker to <laughs> the students out there, again, doing that innovative thinking and team management. Right. And from there, we dedicated meetings to informational. So we have biweekly meetings dedicated to companies that can come through, give a 50-minute presentation about their company and what they're looking for, what they're interested in. Wow. Yeah, so that's been, those have been fun. It gets our students in the door with a lot of great companies as well. So if, let's say somebody's listening to this program and they, they're they looking to hire some new designers or, or packaging professionals, should they reach out to you or should they, is there like a, a email address or a website? Mm -hmm. Yep, so I've been, I've been kind of promoting myself as like the bridge between our students yeah. and the professionals, but Good. Definitely Copac is on Instagram. They're on LinkedIn. They're on social medias. So I believe that the tag is just MSU Copac on everything. But yeah, feel free to reach out to me. Feel free to reach out directly to the page. But it's a great place to find those, the, the young talent that we have at MSU. I believe Copac and the program itself is just cultivating some great people. So well done. Well, other than a, a professional headshot, do you have any ad advice for other students that are looking for a job in, in packaging? Yeah, I have advice for days, Corey. <laughs> Definitely the biggest thing that I told people yesterday when it comes to interviews, when it comes to your career is know yourself before yeah. you know anything else. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a lot of people are worried. You know, what if the, what if the interviewer asked me this? What if they asked me that? It's not about what you know. It's about how well do you know yourself in the, in the aspect. So I tell people all the time to just be yourself, you know, be personable, be relatable, be willing to learn yes. and never feel as if you're an expert on the subject because you should always seek to be a student in the room. So well, that's the biggest one I tell people. <laughs> well said and totally agree with you that the way to a, a broad and bright future is uh, to learn every day. And some mm -hmm. of the most interesting people I've met on this podcast and in the world of packaging have said, hey, man, I learned something new every day, and I've been doing this for 30 years. And, mm -hmm. you know, so you imagine that experience. And to have the mindset of being a learner always is appropriate. Right. Um, well said. Very well said. So how do, how do people get in touch with you? Um, yeah, so anybody can reach out to me on LinkedIn. That's pretty much the only social media I'm on these days. Other than that, I'm just looking at basketball highlights. But <laughs> yeah, it is It is just my LinkedIn. My email is on my LinkedIn as well. But yeah, I'm, I'm always advertising myself as an open source, an open friend, just if anybody needs to talk. And definitely beyond the walls of MSU students as well. As I worked with, I worked in a group with a Clemson student, a Virginia Tech student, and an RIT student. So Wow. I would love to keep the connections open and meet new people and sharing advice too. So what's your favorite basketball team? Ah, uh, basketball's kind of letting me down right now. But <laughs> definitely I'll chalk it up to the Lakers. You know, I love yeah. the the history. I love that LeBron came and joined the team, Russell Westbrook. Yeah. So definitely love them right now. I'm from Portland, so I can't I can't say that I agree with you, but as they always beat us. Uh, but it's, uh, <laughs> they are an amazing team to watch and, and lots of fun. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate this. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, looking forward to meeting you in person at PAC Expo in a few weeks. Of course, most definitely. I appreciate you as well, man. Thanks, Brandon.